country that I've lived in. I've lived in the U.S. for about 20 years, and now I've lived in Kenya for the other years of my life. But this is the only country that people become overnight millionaires by working with the government. Madam Speaker, every politician who comes into this house, the Senate, the National Assembly, pray or actually spend most of his or her time seeking government tenders, working with the government, cutting those deals that the distinguished senator from uh, Bungoma was talking about. We are teaching our children that the only way that you can be able to be respected is by cutting deals. That is the reason why you can see those university students in cyber cafes discussing about deals. It is because we are leading by example. Madam Speaker, I'm sick and tired of this. It is now becoming a comedy. Every year, the president is ahead by saying, everyone who is corrupt should carry their own cross. I've been waiting to see someone senior in government carrying their own cross or actually being prosecuted and found guilty of having embezzled funds. We are not ready as a country to accept the truth. And the moment we accept the truth, Madam Speaker, is when we are going to begin to have a decent conversation about corruption in this country. All of us in this country, we the politicians are number one in corruption. If it was a championship, I'd probably say the presidency are the defending champions. Madam Speaker, I can tell you this, that we are all corrupt. Let us not kid ourselves. This is something that has been ailing us for a very long time. A lot of favoritism everywhere. In our offices, we employ our relatives. In our offices, we favor those people who are our political psychophants. We do not reward merit. Let us not kid. The question is, are we really ready and willing to solve this problem? Today, I listen carefully to the story that the former prime minister gave. And if, and I stand corrected on this, but what the prime minister was saying is that we are saying we are fighting corruption. But the people who we are arresting are those junior officers. It's like you take a dog, yes? You go hunting. But you don't guide that dog. You let the dog get into the bush. It will come out with a squirrel. It will come out with a rat. But what the Prime Minister said, when the leopard comes, it runs away. The truth is, if we are really serious about fighting this corruption, then we must guide the dog that we take hunting to ensure that even if it's a leopard, Madam Speaker, if you go to Masai Mara, you will see dogs, just real dogs, who are trained to be able to fight a lion because they are guided. The only way that we are going to end corruption in this country is if we first take personal responsibility, and that is what we are not ready to do. We need to realize that if God is so kind to us, he will only give us 70 years and will die and leave all these earthly possessions in this world. The only way you can be given a contract is if you know so and so and so and so. It is frustrating, Madam Speaker. The reason why we have a lot of pending bills, some which cannot even be authenticated, is because of corruption. Madam Speaker, I, it is sad. The distinguished senator from Machakos nearly cried. I'm upset. I'm angry. And every Kenyan ought to be angry. 
because we're not going anywhere. We have so many youth who are unemployed. But instead of us coming up with ideas on how to make them employed, we are busy cutting deals with even foreigners. Right now, when you travel around this country, you'll see that any business that is coming up, it is managed by foreigners. Why? Because we are blindfolded, we are so corrupt, we cannot see opportunities. All restaurants in this country, high-end restaurants are now run by foreigners. And we politicians are partners. When are we going to teach our youth that you can make a decent living by using the opportunities which are around? The reason why Matiangi is, in, is, is taking action now is not because he doesn't want to open our country for direct foreign investment. It is because he wants us to be upset, to be able to see those opportunities. Madam Speaker, we have to end impunity. If we can be able to say, it does not matter who you are, who your, who your godfather is, or where you come from, so long as you've committed a crime, you face the full wrath of the law. The day we are able to say that in minute, we are going to be able to end corruption. Otherwise, this is going to be something that we're going to be talking on a yearly basis. This is nothing but systemic corruption. Madam Speaker, we have weakened all our institutions. We don't give them independence. Even in this parliament, Madam Speaker, I dare say that when we bring in legislations, most of the legislation that come from the government are designed to create authorities to embezzle funds. Madam Speaker, I would request one more minute. Please. Yeah, just one minute, please. Madam Speaker, when you look at the quality of legislation that we are, enact we are drafting in this parliament, they are designed to establish authorities to be able to create CEOs. We forget about this issue of devolution. There is a, recently, in this house, we killed the warehousing bill. I've seen it in the order paper coming back from the National Assembly. And when you look at it, the reason why we killed it is because we did not agree with the way it was drafted. Now it's finding a way to come back. What do you call that? Corruption. It is, it is coming to a point where we are now saying you know, this is sort of like a national culture. If you're not corrupt, you're not Kenyan. We need to be having the conversation that we are talking and about, but be ready to take personal responsibility. Be ready to say, I will reward so-and-so because of merit, but not because he come from my home. That is the reason why we're not developing in this country, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I support the President, and I want to encourage him. And I want to say something here that probably even my leader would not expect me to say. But if His Excellency the President, Mwigai Kenyatta, really go the whole nine years and fight corruption, I'll be among the first people to go down and beg him to run again for presidency. But right now, we are just going to be entertained. It's becoming comical. So let's not just practice what you preach. Let's not just preach. So the biggest question to ask ourselves is, what is, what is this corruption? Madam Speaker, all over in the media, the media is awash with all ideas of what form of corruption ail this country. Recently, Madam Speaker, we were entertained by the distinguished senator who spoke before me, I think from Kericho, from Nandi, Cheryl Gay. When he said that in his county, 
there is a lot of nepotism. There are so many psychophants, including using a word, slay queens, that the governor there is hiring all these people. Madam Speaker, how do we solve this corruption problem? One, we must build capacities. Our county government, Madam Speaker, are rotting in corruption because, like the distinguished senator from Homer Bay said, sometimes, I'm not going to use his words, but sometimes lacking that capacity to be able to develop legislations that will be able to help you do your job, if you do not have that capacity, there is no way you are going to be able to achieve the, uh, what you really want to achieve. The problem we have is, in this country is that we are not ready. This government, we politicians, are not ready to empower our people, to give them tools that they can use to fight corruption, Madam Speaker. If we are ready to fight corruption, let us develop these tools. Let us cut the red tape. 